Well, hello, everybody. This is a little bit different, isn't it? So this is my very first episode of my brand new podcast, Foxy After Dark. For those of you that don't know me, my name is Lucy. I am recording this from my home in the leafy suburb of Surrey in the UK. For those of you that are overseas and don't know where Surrey is. And for those of you that do know me, you will know that for some time now, I've been on social media, on Instagram and YouTube under Foxy Geek Girl. And I thought, why not share with you some of my bedtime routine? Now, I'm not going to go through with you how I remove my makeup or anything like that. Not yet, anyway. Maybe that's a later podcast. But in terms of my going to sleep routine, it's very easy, isn't it, for people to get into bed on a night and be so caught up with everything that's been happening throughout the day, work, worries, to try and switch off, to go to sleep can be very difficult. So I thought one of the things that I do when I go to bed often is listen to either the radio, if I fancy listening to music, or sometimes I listen to podcasts. And I thought, therefore, what a great way to help you guys off to sleep on a night, help you switch off by sharing with you some of my favourite old time radio shows. And we're talking old time. Some of these are ancient, really, really. But I figured that every night as part of my routine, I would share with you what I was going to listen to that night. And then, you know, I get a cup of cocoa perhaps and sit and listen or actually lie down in bed and put your headphones on and have a listen before you go to sleep. Personally, I like to, it's naughty because I then have to get out and clean my teeth, but I like to get all cosy, get into bed, especially on these cold, cold nights. For those of you in the UK, you will know how freezing it is over here at the moment. So on a cold night, it's nice to put my little PJs on, get all cosy in bed, a cup of hot chocolate maybe little dash of Baileys in it or something like that and then listen to the radio or an old radio show before then unfortunately having to get out of bed and clean my teeth before going to sleep. Why don't you get yourselves ready, snuggle down into bed, put your ear pods in or something like that and you can also listen to the same thing as me before going to bed tonight. I've got lots and lots of old radio shows that I will be able to share with you over the coming weeks. How exciting is that? Don't get too excited now. And as you drift off to sleep tonight or prepare to drift off to sleep tonight, you can listen to the same thing as me. That's good, isn't it? I'll do plenty of shout outs. So don't forget to get in touch if you want to, if you want to have a shout out. As mentioned, I am on Instagram and YouTube as Foxy Geek Girl, but I have set up an exclusive hangout page at patreon.com forward slash foxy after dark just for my new podcast so please please get on have a look and join my patreon and then I can do plenty of shout outs for my patreon gang and also I can keep you up to date on everything I'm getting up to I might even do some podcast lives how exciting would that be I don't know when I don't know where but I do lots of exciting things I think so I can share those bits and bobs with you as we go. So don't forget to join and I can do lots of shout outs. And also I would really love your feedback and ideas on how this podcast evolves over time. So make sure you keep in touch via my social media, the first podcast. And what are we going to be listening to tonight? Well, it's Friday night, so let's uh, have something really, really good. It is going to be for this evening, an episode of George Valentine, his first broadcast which was on the 14th of May, 1946. Now, no, I wasn't born at that point. (laughs) Cheeky lot. But this is a great show. So why not snuggle down, get comfy, relax, have a listen to George Valentine's first broadcast. Standard of California invites you to... Let George do it. What's the quickest starting, smoothest running gasoline on the road today? Chevron Supreme. Faster pickup, too. Take a tip, friends, and fill up with Chevron Supreme at your nearest Chevron gas station, garage, or standard station. Start down the highway or in traffic, and you'll be thankful for a tank full of Chevron Supreme gasoline.
George Valentine has been out of uniform only a few weeks. Blessed with an abundance of energy, an adventuresome spirit, and not too much money, he has sunk his last dime in office rent, a few pieces of furniture, and an ad in the classified section of the daily paper. An ad which reads, Do you have a crime that needs solving? Do you have a dog that needs walking? Do you have a wife that needs spanking? Let George do it. Now, three days have passed, and George, sitting on his swivel chair with his feet up on the desk, is still anxiously waiting for a client. Suddenly, the door bursts open. Mr. Valentine? Yes? Mr. George Valentine? Yes, yes, come right in. Uh, have a seat. Oh, here, take this one, it's softer. Oh, thank you. Oh, don't mention it. Have a cigar? Huh? Oh, <laughs> I'm sorry, you're too young. Uh, wait a minute, here, have a chocolate bar with almonds. Oh, thank you. Now then, what can I do for you? Well, I came to work for you. Work? Oh, I thought you were a client. Oh, no, sir. Well, that's all right. I'll get it. Hey, wait a minute. Good morning. Let George do it. How do you like that? Well, I can make an appointment for you. I'm Mr. Valentine's confidential assistant. That's nice to know. Well, if you're that close, then come right up, Mr. Winters. Yeah, goodbye, sir. Now, look here, Bottom Button. I'm Sonny Brooks. You can call me Sonny. Well, now, look here, Sonny. Who hired you? Well, I come with the office. You see, Caleb, the elevator man, is my friend. He knew I was looking for a job, so he said, Sonny, whoever gets that office gets you, too. Yeah, well, you're too young, Sonny. Things may get a little rough around here. Oh, that's okay, sir. I'm a very rugged character. Now then, Mr. Winters will be here soon. Winters? The mystery writer? Yes, sir. Jonathan Winters. He just phoned. Oh. We can discuss my salary later. I'll go on the payroll as of today. Whether I like it or not, huh? Well, I have a feeling you're going to become very fond of me, sir. I grow on people. Yeah, like a wart. Okay, Sonny, call an employment agency and get me a secretary. Well, that won't be necessary, sir. Why? Don't tell me you type also. No, but my sister does. Your sister? Claire. She'll be here soon to start to work. Say, does your whole family go with this office? Well, I don't have much of a family. There's just Claire and me. Oh. Oh, that's tough, kid. But you're lucky. I haven't even got a sister. Tell you what. Maybe we can sort of look after each other. How about it, huh? Oh, that'll be swell, Mr. Valentine. I'll be glad to take care of you, sir. <laughs> You're okay, Sonny. Well, you like Claire, too. She's prettier than I am. Oh, perfect. It doesn't matter if she can type or take dictation, just so she's prettier than you are. Mr. Valentine? Hmm? Oh, oh yes, Mr. Winters, come right in. Mr. Valentine... I'm here because... Oh, it doesn't matter what the job is, Mr. Winters. I'm your man. Just throw your problem in my lap and I'll come up with the right answer. Mr. Valentine, I'm about to be murdered. Hell, <laughs> now, don't take it too seriously. A lot of people... Murdered? Murdered? You're, you're joking, I hope. I'm not joking. Oh, well, <laughs> that's a little out of my line, Mr. Winters. I, I mean, that is... Well, Mr. You... Valentine, I... I have been murdered. Suffering cats. Oh, well, hold on. don't stand there, Sonny. Do something. Call somebody. The police, the fire department. You all get a doctor. And Sonny. Yeah, Mr. Valentine? Don't get excited. Look at me. I'm perfectly cool. Going up, miss? Is Mr. Valentine's office in this building? Hit floor. Step in. Oh, thank you. <laughs> You're Claire, ain't you? Well, how did you... Oh, family resemblance. You look like Sonny. Nice boy, Sonny. I think so. Of course, I'm prejudiced. You know what sisters are like. <laughs> yes, I'm the same way about Georgie. Georgie? You don't mean Mr. Valentine. Of course I do. Known him for years. Used to work for his father. <laughs> Georgie and me got to be good friends on account of his curls. Curls? Mm, he must have been all of four years. Had the prettiest long curls you ever did see. <laughs> really? <laughs> yes, I talked to his mom to having them cut off. Uh, George and me have been close friends ever since. I can understand that. Hey, you gonna go to work for him? Well, I'm gonna apply for the job. Ah, well, you keep an eye on him, hear me? Well, You I... know, that boy never thinks to eat unless someone reminds him. Oh, this is the fifth floor. Oh. And don't let his talk fool you. He tries to act hard-boiled, but I know Georgie. Underneath it all, he's still a little boy with them pretty long curls. <laughs> the first order you're left... Oh, there he is now. Caleb, 
Caleb, get a doctor up here right away. I either know your stomach. I don't care. Just get a doctor. I'll get Dr. Mack. He took very good care of you that time you had that cold, remember? Uh, Mr. Valentine. Well? Is anything wrong? Oh, no, no. Nothing trifling. Now, run along, sweetheart. And, and if you're a client, come back tomorrow, will you? I'm Claire Brooks, Sonny's sister. Yeah, well, come back tomorrow. Mr. Valentine. Well? You're going to interview me for the job whether you like it or not. I spent ten cents on bus fare to come here. Look, here's a dime. Now be a good girl and beat it. I certainly will. I wouldn't work for you if you offered me $1,000 a week to sit behind a desk and do nothing but powder my nose. It could stand a little powder at that. Oh, you... Wait a minute. You had any experience as a secretary? Of course. Can you mend socks? Mend socks? Iron shirts, sew buttons, cook breakfast over a can of sterno? Mr. Valentine, are you looking for a secretary or a wife? Oh, a secretary. I'm still a bachelor. Knock on wood. Had one close call, though, but I got away from her. <laughs> Lucky guy. <laughs> Lucky girl. Say, you're all right. Okay, you're hired. Thank you. I'll give you back that dime. What about salary? Well, we'll discuss that after I collect my first client. How do I know you'll ever get a first client? My first client? Oh, oh, I've got one now. I don't know what I'm going to do with him, but I've got him. Come on in and see for yourself. That gentleman stretched out on the floor is my first... He... Sonny! Sonny! Yeah, Mr. Valentine? Where is he? Where's the body? Where's Mr. Winters? Suffering cats, Mr. Valentine. He's gone! Makes sense, will you? Mr. Winters couldn't have just disappeared into thin air. It's like I told you, Mr. Valentine. I went into the waiting room to phone the police, and the next thing I knew, you were out here yelling for me. Look, this window is open. What of it? Well, don't you see? It leads to the fire escape. Yeah, and this door leads to a closet, and that door leads to a... Well, never mind. Will you be serious? Mr. Winters was shot. What? Maybe his murderer followed him here to your office. Maybe he hid out on the fire escape listening. Then when you left the office, he dragged the body out. I'll bet sis is right. Sure. Oh, look, kids, we haven't got time to puzzle over it now. I'm in a jam. The police will be here any minute. The police? Of course. Sonny phoned them. I'll look pretty silly trying to explain that the body disappeared. My first case and I make a mess of it. Oh, don't get discouraged, Mr. Valentine. Well, to tell you the truth, Sonny, I don't know what to do next. I haven't even got a clue. <laughs> Still a little boy in curls. Curls? Oh, Caleb's been talking to you, huh? <laughs> He's a swell old gentleman, but don't take him too seriously. Why not? Well, he thinks I know all the answers. And look at me. Mr. Valentine, why don't you go out and find a clue? Find one? Where? Well, did Mr. Winters have a family? Well, I don't. Hey, wait a minute. I've seen pictures of his wife in society papers. Good. Oh, Claire, you're wonderful. Hey, remind me to raise your salary. What salary? Well, when you get one, remind me to raise it. See you later. Where are you going, Mr. Valentine? To Mr. Winter's home. And when the police come, stall them. But, Mr. Valentine, what'll I tell them? Tell them nothing. You've got charm, haven't you? Well, use it. Mr. Valentine, I've got to know. What do you think happened to my husband? Now, just take it easy, Mrs. Winters. Oh, I was afraid something would happen to him. Why? Well, he, he was so worried. I thought it was because his writing wasn't going too well. He hadn't been able to write anything in a long time. Oh, your husband is the famous mystery writer, isn't he? Yes. Yeah, I've read some of his stuff. The case of the body in the bathtub, murder has the hiccups. And uh, this is his study. Oh. Say, quite a layout. Uh, what are all these papers? His manuscript. He was working on The Lost Corpse. The Lost Corpse? <laughs> Cute title. Oh, it wasn't coming easy. He knew it had to be good or it'd mean the end of... Mr. Valentine, what are you looking for in that waste paper basket? Well, I, I don't know exactly. I just got a hunch. I want the truth. Was he murdered? Relax, Mrs. Winters, relax. The very best man in town is on the job. Who? Who? Well, me, of course. Is this The Lost Corpse? Put that manuscript down. Don't look at it. Why not? Oh, I, I'm sorry. Just a, a, a superstition. Jonathan never wanted anyone to read what he was working on. Oh. Then, of course, you haven't read this. No, no, certainly not. Uh, did your husband have any domestic trouble? Domestic trouble? Jonathan was devoted to me. Was? Why the past tense? Well, oh, I, I don't know what I'm saying. Mrs. Winters. Yes, yes, what is it? There's a policeman downstairs. He wants to talk to you. A policeman? I'll be right down. Yeah, well, look, Mrs. Winters, you haven't seen me, understand? But why? Your husband trusted me. Why don't you try it? Well, all right, Mr. Valentine. Look, any way I can get out of here without going down the stairs? Yes, that door leads to my husband's private elevator. It'll take you to the back entrance. Say, he thought of everything. 
He liked to come and go without disturbing the rest of the household. A clever man. Okay, Mrs. Winters, I'll get in touch with you tomorrow. Tomorrow? You mean you'll have news for me? Well, maybe it'll be news to you. And then again, Mrs. Winters, maybe it won't. Mr. Valentine, what's the idea of dragging me out here in the middle of the night? Keep your pretty little mouth shut, will you, Claire? What is this place, anyway? The back entrance to the Winter's home. Haven't they got a front entrance? Sure, sure, but we're not using it. We're here to steal something. Steal? I'm supposed to be a secretary, not a second-story man. Keep quiet. Mr. Valentine, I quit. Yeah, some other time. Now step into that elevator. An elevator? Where will this thing take us? Up to Mr. Winter's workroom. It's pitch black in here. I don't feel safe. I'm here. That's what I mean. Shh. Now keep quiet. Oh! What's the matter? You don't have to hold my hand. I'm not holding your hand. Well, someone is. Don't scream. I've got him covered. Put him up, you... Yeah, get that gun out of my ribs. Sonny! Sonny, I told you to go home. I have a feeling you're going to be very glad I'm along, Mr. Valentine. You might need me. Yeah, like I need two heads. You could use two. Now, both of you stay right here. I know where the desk is. Well, what do you want in there? I've got to get the lost corpse. Lost corpse? You mean you think Mr. Winter's body's in there? Yeah. No, no, the manuscript of his book. Now, keep quiet. Don't make a sound. Oh! Mr. Valentine, what was that? <laughs> Just an old shin of mine. Hey, I hear somebody coming up the stairs. Okay, kids, we can beat it now. Everything's under control. I've got the lost corpse. Is it a good story, Mr. Valentine? Mm-hmm. Well, aren't you going to let us read it? Mrs. Winters wouldn't approve. Oh, what's she like? Is she attractive? Never mind, Mrs. Winters. What about the lost corpse? Well, it's, it's a very unusual story. About a man and his wife. How original. <laughs> the wife would like to give him the gate, but she hasn't any money of her own. Mm -hmm. However, she stands to collect a lot if her husband ever kicks the bucket. Is there a murder? Natch. The husband is shot, but he manages to make his way to a private investigator's office. Huh? Is that in the story? Sure. But that's what Mr. Winters did. The husband tells the investigator he's about to be murdered. Hey, that's what he told you. Then he collapses. When the investigator steps out of his office, the wounded man disappears. Just like Mr. Winters did. Well, that's what actually happened. It is? Well, what do you know about that? Well, go on, Mr. Valentine. Then what? Well, later the guy returns to his wife and he says, You thought you'd kill me, but I'm not dead yet. You, you... Yes, go on. You, well, that's all. That's as far as Mr. Winters got with his story. No wonder Mrs. Winters didn't want you to read it. It's a story of their life. It shows she's guilty. She killed her husband. Georgie. Hey, Georgie. Oh, yeah, Caleb, what do you want? Now, where's Mrs. Winters? Is she all right now? Mrs. Winters? What are you talking well, about? Well, I, I left her in your waiting room. She came to see you. Oh, when was this? A few minutes ago. She acted kind of funny, like maybe she was sick. Come on. Not a sign of her. Caleb, are you sure you left Mrs. Winters here in my waiting room? Mr. Valentine, look, on the table. A woman's purse. With initials on it, M.W. M.W. Marsha Winters. Sure. Do you think the same thing happened to her, Mr. Valentine? Someone followed her here and hid out on the fire escape? No, no, I don't think so. She heard us talking. She knew we thought she was guilty. Oh, of course. All right, Caleb, thanks a lot. Well, that's all right, Georgie. Call me if you need any help. Say, how are you two at playing games? Games? At a time like this? Look, Sonny, you be Sonny. I'll be George Valentine. And Claire, you be Mr. Winters. What? Now, Claire, step outside the office. Give us a few minutes, then come in and say you expect to be murdered. Oh, I get it. You want to reenact the crime. Ah, <laughs> smart boy. Okay, Claire, get going. First, I'm a second story man, and now I'm an actress. I quit. Oh, go on. Claire, be a good sport. Humor me. I said I quit. Yeah, well, we haven't got time. Now, you can quit tomorrow. Oh, all right. But you can think of the silliest thing. <laughs> Now what do we do, Mr. Valentine? Huh? Well, just exactly what we did when Mr. Winters first stepped into this office. Okay, Claire, come on in. I don't think she heard you. <laughs> All right, Claire, we're ready. What's the matter with her? I'll get her. Claire, you can come in now. Claire! Where is she? Suffering cats. What a mess. Now my sister's disappeared. <laughs> Well, 
Well, now Claire has disappeared. We'd better give George a couple of minutes to think of some way out of this. Ever notice how it sometimes takes a couple of days to get accustomed to a change in climate? But not everyone knows that a change in climate or altitude can affect the way a gasoline performs in a car. You'll never have reason to notice it either if you drive on Chevron Supreme. That's because this great premium gasoline is tailored to each different climate and altitude zone in the West. Wherever you go, you get a Chevron Supreme that gives you the same fast starts, the same flashing pickup and eager power. Why not give it a try? Just stop at any Chevron gas station, garage, or standard station. You'll be thankful for a tank full of Chevron Supreme gasoline. Faster starting, quicker pickup with Chevron Supreme gasoline. George doesn't seem to have gotten very far in his solution of this case. First, a murdered man disappeared from right under his nose. Then the murdered man's wife mysteriously departed, and now his secretary has vanished into thin air. Are you just going to sit here in your office, Mr. Valentine? Aren't you going to do anything? She's my sister. She's the only sister I've got. No, no, take it easy, Sonny. If I thought anything had happened to Clara, I'd be out searching every house in this town. Well, then where is she? Well, she couldn't take it, that's all, so she quit, walked out on us. I can't say I blame her. That doesn't sound like Claire. Georgie. Yeah, Caleb? You haven't had your dinner yet. Don't you think you better go out and get something to eat? Oh, not now, Caleb. You could uh, leave by the fire escape. The fire escape? A police car just stopped in front. Oh. Suffering cats, the police. Get yourself a nice, juicy steak. Yeah, that's just what I'll do. Come on, Sonny. Go down there and stall him, Caleb. Oh, I intend to. Now, you take your time and digest your dinner, did you hear me? Yeah, sure. Let's go, Sonny, the fire escape. Oh, and Sonny. Yeah, Mr. Valentine? Better bring Mrs. Winter's purse along with you. Excuse me, Mr. Valentine, but aren't you going to stop and get something to eat? Yeah, that's the trouble with women. As soon as the going gets a little tough, they walk out on you. Didn't you promise Caleb you'd get yourself a steak? Boy, a big, beautiful steak. But you're right, Sonny. She is. She is, sir? Much prettier than you. Mr. Valentine, if we're not going to eat, we can't just drive around all night. We've got to find out who murdered Mr. Winters and what they did with his body and where Mrs. Winters disappeared to and what happened to Claire. Isn't that right, sir? And she's very intelligent. That is, for a woman. Mr. Valentine. Hmm? Oh, Okay, Sonny. Look at the address on that letter. What letter, sir? The one in Mrs. Winter's purse. Is there a letter in here? Well, didn't you notice it when Claire opened the purse? No, sir. Oh, here it is. It's addressed to Mrs. Marcia Winters, 300 Pepper Tree Lane, Cedarhurst. Uh-huh. Hey, that's in the country. Yeah, they must have a country home, too. Cedarhurst. Yeah, that's out on Highway 6, right? near. Hey. We're on Highway 6. Uh, uh, We're headed towards Cedarhurst now. Uh, brilliant deduction, Sonny. I'll increase your ration of bubble gum. Uh, I filled her up, sir. Oil, water? No, thanks. Wash your windshield? No, don't bother. I washed it once and I couldn't do a thing with it. Don't get many customers around here at night. Pretty deserted road. Yeah. I'll bet we're the first car you've seen this evening. That's right. Oh, uh, except for that cab. Cab? With a woman in it? Now, how'd you guess it? Hey, I'll bet it was Mrs. Winters. Hang on, Sonny. We're getting warm. Is it, Mr. Valentine? Now, careful. Don't make any noise. There's a light inside the cabin. And a woman. See her moving around? Oh, yeah. I can make out her shadow now. All right, Sonny, you stay out here. Mr. Valentine. I'm sorry, Sonny, but there may be trouble. I can't let anything happen to you. Oh, but I'm in this with you. Look, don't you remember? I was going to look out for you. Yeah, but you may need me. Jeepers, Mr. Valentine. All right, Sonny, you win. But stick close to me, understand? Yes, sir. Are we 
Gonna just walk right in? No, no, of course not. That's no fun. What would they do in a mystery show? They'd climb in a window. <laughs> then we'll climb in a window. Mr. Valentine, she turned off the light. Um, shall I go in first? No, you get in back of me. Let me handle this. Yes, sir. Take it easy, Sonny. I'm okay. Oh! I've got her. Let go! No, you don't. Just stay right here. You're hurting me. Turn the light on, Sonny. Yes, sir. Let's see what we bagged. Claire! Well, well, well. If it isn't second story, Clarissa. You have to be so rough. I bet you cracked two ribs. <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't know my own strength. Well, now that you see who I am, you don't have to keep on holding me. Uh, no, but it's fun. Claire, what are you doing here? Well, she saw the address on the letter, so she decided to follow the clue. Yeah, but why didn't she let us in on it? She thought I was a dope, Sonny, so she took over. You know all the answers, don't you? Not quite. What happened when you got here? Nothing. The place looked deserted. I crawled in the window, too. No one here? I couldn't see anyone. Are you sure? Of course, but, well, I've had the strangest feeling. Yeah? As though someone's been watching me. Mm-hmm. Uh, stay here with Sonny. Uh, I'll, I'll look around. Suffering cat, sis. You sure had me scared. Oh, I'm sorry, Sonny, but Mr. Valentine didn't seem to be making any effort to solve the case. Ah, uh, don't kid yourself. He just keeps things to himself. Well, everything seems to be in apple pie order. Hey, listen. Sonny, Claire, stand back there in the corner. I'll cover the door. Be careful, Mr. Valentine. Do I detect concern in your voice? Well, I don't want to see you get shot right in front of me. Then close your eyes. Good evening, Mrs. Winters. Oh. May I present my two assistants, Claire and Sonny Brooks? How did you know I'd come here? What do you want? Oh, just want to make talk. Mr. Valentine, you've got to believe me. I'm not like the woman in his story. I love Jonathan. Uh-huh. And you're the girl who never reads his manuscripts until they're finished. Well, I... Oh, go ahead. Turn me over to the police. I don't care what happens anymore. That's as good as a confession, <laughs> Mr. Valentine. Well, I'm in no mood for confessions. Come on, we're going to play a little game. Oh, not again. Sonny, you keep an eye on Mrs. Winters. Now, don't let her leave. Don't worry. I won't try to run away. Okay, Claire, you're the wife in the lost corpse. More acting? I quit. Tomorrow. Now then, I'll be the husband of Mr. Winter's story. Here are some lines for you to read, Claire. You came all prepared, didn't you? Is this stuff that you wrote, Mr. Valentine? Well, of course. I'm a man of many talents. Now then, we'll skip to the part where I walk in wounded and say, you thought you killed me, but I'm not dead yet. You think you can follow those lines? I can read, if that's what you mean. <laughs> all set? Let's go. You thought you killed me, but I'm not dead yet. No, no, I didn't shoot you. I swear I didn't. But who'll believe you? The police? All the clues point to you. Do you mean... Yes, my dear. You wanted me out of the way. When you got your wish, I shot myself. No, I no. I killed myself. But they'll think you're guilty. You'll pay for it. I I'll get a doctor. Too late. Too late. Goodbye, my dear. Goodbye. Then I die. What a performance. I don't get it, Mr. Valentine. You wrote this ending for his story, is that it? Of course. What's a story without an ending? I'll tell you what Mr. Valentine is getting at. He's trying to prove that my husband shot himself. Shot himself in such a way that it would look as though I murdered him. Why would Jonathan do such a thing? He knew that I loved him. You don't have to put on an act for us, Mrs. Winters. Why don't you turn her over to the police? Now, nah, just keep your shirt on, Sonny. And everybody stand where you are. Don't make a move. Understand? What are you going to do? You'll see. Mr. Valentine, why are you opening that door? Well, we're going to have some company. Company? Then somebody is hiding in here. Okay, you can come on now. Who are you calling? Hey, you mean the police are here? The police? You've set a trap for me. Come on out, Mr. Winters. Mr. Winters? Huh? How did you know I was hiding in there? Jonathan. Well, how'd you like my way of ending your story, Mr. Winters? It was very clever, Mr. Valentine. Oh, Jonathan, you're not hurt. You weren't shot. I'm terribly sorry you were worried, darling. Hey, I don't get this. Mr. Winters couldn't find an ending for his story, The Lost Corpse. But how did you know that? Searched his waste paper basket, found it full of rejected endings. That's quite right. Finally, I decided to do just what the hero in my book did. So I went to Mr. Valentine. You see, I saw his ad in the paper. Said he could solve anything. Then, when he tried to go home and explain to you, Mrs. Winters, he saw the police there. So he came out here to hide. Oh. Right, Mr. Winters? Absolutely right. I knew I'd find him here. Then when I searched this cabin, I saw him hiding in the closet. Well, why didn't you say something? Oh, I wanted to put on a show for him. Oh, Jonathan. Oh, forgive me, darling. <laughs> well, come on, kids. They don't need an order. Now, wait a minute, Mr. Valentine. I've got the ending to my story. Thanks to you. And with all that publicity in the papers, it's sure to have a big sale. So, name your fee. Oh, well, I, I don't know, Mr. Winters. I, <laughs> I haven't really thought about it. I, 
See, and even grand. Huh? Oh, yes. I'll send you a check in the morning. Oh, no hurry. No hurry. <laughs> I, uh, I just happen to have a pen and a blank check with me, though. As a matter of fact, here it is all made out. Just needs your signature, Mr. Winters. Oh, yeah, yes, of course, well, certainly. <laughs> Supper and cats, a thousand bucks. There you are. <laughs> thanks, thanks. Well, let's go, kids. Good night, Mr. Winters, and uh, if you ever get stuck again... I'll remember. <laughs> Good night. Good night. Whew, what a day. Now I feel like collapsing. Sonny, come here and put your arm around me. Oh, sure, sis. Go away, Sonny. <laughs> Let George do it. <laughs> Tonight, I'd like to play a little game with you, too. A word game. It's very simple. I say a word, and you pop out with the first thing it brings to your mind. All set? Okay, I'll say oil. I'll bet most of you immediately thought of slippery. And that's right. Oil is supposed to be slippery, but sometimes it can be too slippery and slide right off spots it's supposed to protect. This can be awfully dangerous to cars... So we gave RPM motor oil a special non-skid ingredient that makes it cling to engine wear points. That's why it sticks to hot spots on upper cylinder walls that other oils often leave bare and exposed to wear. Other compounds in RPM gently remove carbon, prevent corrosion, and sludge. Try this all-around car saver. Ask for RPM motor oil at any standard station, Chevron gas station, or garage. And remember... Fill up with Chevron Supreme, too. You'll be thankful for a tank full of Chevron Supreme gasoline. Faster starting, quicker pickup with Chevron Supreme gasoline. Next week at this time, George Valentine has a difficult problem thrust upon him. You'll probably hear him saying something like this. You're Mrs. Wentworth? The Mrs. Wentworth. Oh, yes, first family. Uh, Mr. Valentine, someone very close to me is in serious trouble. Oh, I see, Mrs. Wentworth. What's she done? Well, it's what she might do. You see, she uh, picks up things. Picks up? Oh, a kleptomaniac. I want you to watch her closely. Follow her everywhere. Come to my house this evening and I'll explain. Good afternoon, Mr. Valentine. Good afternoon. Mr. Valentine. Yeah, Claire? Mr. Valentine, don't look now, but your fountain pen is gone. Let George Do It, starring Robert Bailey as George Valentine, is written by Pauline Hopkins and directed by Owen Vinson. Others in the cast were Shirley Mitchell as Claire, Eddie Firestone Jr. as Sonny, Joe Kearns as Caleb, Georgia Backus as Mrs. Winters, Howard McNear as Mr. Winters, and Horace Murphy as the filling station attendant. The music was composed and conducted by Charles Dant, your announcer, John Heaston. Be with us next week when Standard of California invites you to Let George Do It. So welcome back. What did you think of our very first podcast? How nice is that? So it's the very first episode of George Valentine's broadcast. Let George do it. I'm going to be back at the same time tomorrow with an episode of Stepso and Son. Now, if you've got a sense of humor like me, you will like Stepto and Son. The great thing about them is, of course, is they did a lot of TV work as well. So as I'm listening to Steptoe and Son, I can literally visualize their faces and their actions. So please, please join me again tomorrow evening. Don't forget to check out my podcast page at patreon.com forward slash Foxy After Dark. I can't wait to catch up with you. Please get in touch. I could do some shout outs already. How exciting would that be if I could do some shout outs on my very first, my very second night of podcast that would be amazing hopefully you'll join me tomorrow again for another episode of foxy after dark stay safe always be kind love you all bye